Hi Didier. Hi. Welcome Hi. to Sudeep Audio's YouTube channel. Thank you Aditya. My pleasure. So, uh, you are a very well-known acoustician, studio designer and do a lot more things. <laughs> so, if you could tell our viewers how you got started and how did you come to India, how did you settle down in Auroville, Pondicherry? Wow. That's going to be a long story. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Let me make it short. Um, well, in, in a way, uh, the whole um, journey came from uh, my passion. That's always, I mean, if we are in this field, it's usually a matter of passion. Otherwise, we, we don't last. Right. It's, it's tough and uh, we have to be driven by some, uh, some energy. And so I started uh, into the music, uh, the pro pro music uh, industry at age 14. Wow. So it was early as my first uh, release recording uh, LP at that time, it was a vinyl, was a rock band that I recorded at age 14. And uh, as a sound engineer, but at that time it was a eight track uh, um, tape okay. recording. Half so inch? It was, a, yeah, it was a half inch at that time. Yeah. With, so I think there was some DBX, uh, um, noise reduction or okay. something like that. But it was really the, the beginning of the, the, the possibility of doing... It, we, we used a kind of a home studio situation and uh, it was uh, interesting to learn and to make as many mistakes I could do. Okay. That's how we learn, no? Right. And um, so it, it led to a step-by-step -step, uh, a, a process of uh, doing more, doing also concerts uh, as a FOH, um, doing uh, uh, anything I could do during my holidays uh, because I was still studying and into electronics mainly. Okay. And um, what country was this in? Say it again. Which which country were you? I was in I was in France at that time. France. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm born in France and uh, I was in France. And then uh, I, at some point I finished my studies in Paris, in, okay. in the main city, and that's where my uh, official career as a, as a sound engineer started in studios, in different studios, and. Uh, uh, in France, usually when you do a, um, a project, a recording with an artist, uh, you kind of requested to tour with with them, uh, which is a bit, in a way, it's it's coherent because you want to have the same sound, same um, same color, same taste. I mean, that to you you can bring it to the audience that they recognize the recording. So, uh, but at the same time, I really consider that it's almost two totally different jobs. Uh, studio and FOH have very different challenges and, and so the whole thing is really um, in a way um, uh, very wide scope. So I had to be stretched between the two for a while and uh, I loved it. Just uh, uh, so I got my own recording studio for a while and then um, I, I kind of uh, asked the acquisition to design it. Okay. And that was my first peek into uh, designing studios. It was, I learned from this, uh, um, this design that it was uh, a real a beautiful science and, and an art as well. And uh, in a way, um, I really, in my, um, in my understanding, I really felt I one day I should do that, but I didn't know how and when. And then um, I toured with a rock band in India, uh, it was in 92. What band was this? It was called Zandiboni. It's a, it's a French rock band actually. It's okay. a, nobody knows much here. It, it's a very, uh, it's known only in France actually. And uh, and uh, but I toured in in India, Nepal, and Pakistan. And um, I felt really uh, uh, home here in India, in a way. And uh, it felt really though at that time the the technical uh, uh, capacity uh, for the rental from the rental companies uh, were quite limited and uh, sometimes even funny because it was like unexpected most of the time. I felt really uh, a good vibe and a good sense of uh, um, friendship mm -hmm. and uh, somehow belonging to the country. So that was a kind of hint to try something. And then uh, I decided to, um, after visiting a place called Auroville where, where I live, I decided to give it a try. Uh, so I sold my recording studio in Paris that I, that I built just um, two years before. And then we, with my wife Cecilia, we, we decided to move uh, to Auroville. Kind of a break after 12 years in uh, intensive uh, um, work, uh, touring. Uh, I was a bit burned out in a way. Okay. And then there was much more to kind of recover from that. Right. Thinking um, I might start my retirement. <laughs> so that was 25 years ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. and you're still working. 
<laughs> so you see, the plans don't work always like expected. That's true. That's true. So, uh, how did you approach clients here? I mean, once you kind of settle down in Oroville, how did you start meeting people here? Language issues also you would have faced initially. Yes. So, how did you kind of start doing business? And well, I, I was uh, since it's a passion, uh, I was kind of uh, uh, caught up by the passion again. So people start start knowing that there was somebody who did um, sound as a pro in France. Uh, so I got uh, asked by friends of friends to help for this, to help for that. And uh, I met a, a, a really beautiful uh, band called Thermal No Quota, okay. based in Bangalore. Yes. And then they are super good friends of mine. Mostly and, money. Yes, yes, Rajiv. And, and Rudy also was the best player at that time. Okay. And. Um, so I started uh, doing a FOH uh, concert for them. Okay. Uh, they were starting also as a band at that time. And we had a great, great uh, time. And then they, we wanted to do a recording. So I, I did a one, uh, um, one full album in, uh, in Bangalore with them. Okay. But the studio was really like, uh, I'm, not, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to give the name. <laughs> <laughs> was not up to the, the mark at all from far. Okay. So I realized that there was a there was a potential for improvement in some cases. And uh, I was thinking, okay, and I already gave uh, to the owner of the studio some tips how to improve with my knowledge as a user in France, but I was not a designer yet. And so I did that in, for several projects. And then at some point I realized it was really a, a possibility. So I, I started designing a small home project for friends mainly. Uh, okay. And then uh, at, some, uh, at that time, I was also uh, in a way uh, involved with uh, uh, Raymans in Rayman in Chennai. Yes. And then um, uh, I did some recording session at his studio, and it was uh, clearly that he, he wanted to have something better and, and bigger. And um, so he said, "I'm planning to to do um, a studio that is going to be uh, my real thing, uh, the, I mean, the real next step in in, in production." Okay. For in terms of quality, and um, so I, I didn't have much news, and, and uh, I knew later on uh, he, he used a, an architect and acquisition from LA. Okay. And uh, so, but the thing didn't move at all; it was really kind of stuck. And um, well, that's one thing we can talk later on about the the, the local um, supervision was not enough to make it really uh, happen properly. So at some point he asked me, can, can you help me? Because it's you into this business, maybe we can do something uh, to make it move. And I realized that uh, um, many aspects were not uh, actual, actually possible the way they were planned. Okay. Uh, in terms of layout, in terms of choice, uh, choice of materials, because of the local conditions mm -hmm. and the local uh, skills yes. and tools. Yes. So uh, I said, well, uh, I can rework uh, the whole thing and then we can uh, maybe do something uh, and most likely we start from scratch. Whatever you've done is not going to be really usable. So it was a bit shock for him. But uh, he said, OK, deal. And anyway, I have to, I'm stuck. <laughs> Let's do it. So then uh, I started from, that was a full-time job uh, for this single project, uh, it's called AM Studio um, in, in Chennai. Yes. And then we, with my own team of, uh, um, I had um, a small team that grew very quickly because of this project. Okay. Uh, and a team, very good team of uh, carpenters and, and uh, builders from Barnaville also. Uh, we did the whole project in seven months uh, and it was, um, I think very successful. Everybody was uh, thrilled and happy at the end. Yeah. So that was the kind of launch of the official sound result. Wow. Understand? It was still there before, but it, that was kind of after that. I didn't have to do too much marketing. <laughs> 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 no, it's one of the best sounding spaces in India. So well, it's it's uh, it hosts, but you know that's part of this project where uh, there's a, not only a capacity but also a will for for quality and and. Um, AI is really a great sound engineer as well. He knows how to listen, to how to... So a lot of things we did uh, um, in a way together, yeah. uh, choosing, listening, uh, the, the, having the, the final decisions uh, uh, as a common goal, so, which is much more motivating and, and much more fruitful at the end. Yeah. Yeah, that's the, 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 the real way I would like to work, not to be hired to do something that's delivered uh, uh, at the end to... Um, to somebody I don't know what it's going to do with that. It was uh, really a synergy between two people and two passions as well. Yes. 
So that's where you get the best result. True. And I think work ethics also play a big role in what you do because yours is basically the design work and when it comes to execution, you have to ensure that it matches the things that were promised. Exactly. So that's the big catch, you know, designing. It's not easy, but it's, uh, it is something that is uh, pretty neat. You do it at the office, you do the calculation, your simulation, you, you, uh, there's some, there's no stress, it's, it's clean, it's, uh, you know, it's not stressful, mm -hmm. and uh, you can reach easily a high quality of, of quality if you, if you have the knowledge and, and, the, and the tools. But uh, implementation on site is messy. It's messy, True. it's uh, it's noisy, it's uh, dirty. Uh, it's not um, always uh, easy to understand why and how this uh, technique has been used. So uh, our number one aim is to have a super uh, control on the on the implementation, on the quality control, and uh, to get uh, not only a good design but a good implementation of the design. Otherwise, it's just as good as nothing. Correct. So uh, the whole thing about uh, the way we have been working the last 20 years, because that we started 20 years ago, uh, has been a really good balance between uh, office work preparation, a lot of preparation. The documentation is, is big. We give every single detail, every single corner uh, section detail. I mean, it, it's very doc documented, uh, including the, the BOQs, including uh, everything. And then uh, we don't stop there. We have people going on site. Uh, I'm going on site also often, and uh, we check every stage. And uh, on top of that, we give a, a training to the maestri of the team, or to the, the, the main uh, the person in charge of the, the, the implementation, so that they understand not only our drawings, but the idea behind the drawings. Mm -hmm. Because if it's uh, typically if it's about isolation, uh, the the idea is uh, it's, it's not about uh, reproducing visually what we want. It has to be totally sealed, it has to be totally uh, um, properly uh, secured. It, there's a lot of uh, aspects that are implicit into the design, but they cannot be shown. So we have to explain that. We have to, uh, we do we do demo sometimes on, on uh, how uh, extreme we should be uh, in terms of uh, quality control and uh, and precision of implementation. So, um, uh, so we have uh, around uh, South India mainly. We have uh, several training teams okay. that are um, not part of our company because we have a, otherwise a conflict of interest. Yes. Where we are supposed to be representing the client. That means whoever is asking us to to implement the studio. And we, if we, if it's our own team, we cannot be. Uh, you know, uh, in the same, in, we will be in a weird position by just uh, shooting in our own foot every time there is a mistake. Okay. So we want to be independent, the, the team to be independent. Doesn't mean that we have to shout at them. <laughs> it's uh, it's a nice uh, communication, but it's a tough one. It's uh, it's uh, There is a, a clear line where we want to be uh, performing as best as possible. Right. I mean, it's always at some point there is some uh, we are flexible in some of the aspects, yes. but in some, on some of the aspects, we typically on the isolation, where there is no flexibility. Okay. That's okay. The, the thing. Okay. So, uh, to put this whole thing in a nutshell, if somebody sends you an inquiry at Sound Wizard, yes. that's your company. Yes. Uh, how does the whole cycle initiate till execution? If you could tell us in steps and stages. Yes. As soon as you get an inquiry, what is the next thing you do and you know, what is the process? The, the first process is to know each other, to know each other because um, we have to be um, in, in sync in terms of communication, in, in, in the expectation, in goals. Uh, otherwise, we maybe propose something that doesn't fit the expectation. Mm -hmm. So we really want to learn about that. What's the context? What's the, 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 what's the, the environment of the, the, the client? Uh, where's the location? Uh, is it easily accessible? Is it, do we have a good communication? Uh, so that's there is a first approach, and then we request some documentation of, let's say, if we start from an available space, what's the, the dimensions, the, the, the some picture, some. So we would also quickly go for a visit, uh, and so far there is no binding document or, or, or finances. We just do that for free because we want to uh, be able to say no, it's not something we do. We cannot uh, be competitive in this uh, area. 
uh, or uh, other client might want to say, well, it might be too uh, expensive at the end, uh, I, I, or, or not what I require. So we want to be free from it, each, each other. Okay. So we, yeah. we have an exploration time together, and usually that's done uh, uh, with uh, Kumba. Kumba is my business partner in, in, in the Sound Wizard. Okay. And um, until we are sure that the scope is clear, the conditions are clear, uh, in terms of technical, in terms of uh, financial also, uh, and then we, we can start together. Right. That's uh, basically, uh, there is a head, we need to have a, 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 um, a head time big enough to, um, to be uh, listed in the next project to be done, because we have always a, a kind of a project in, in process. Right. So uh, once you know the client, only then the financials and Yes, well, the, spoken of. the financials also is something that is uh, uh, flexible in the sense that uh, we, we don't uh, we don't need really to uh, we don't want to impose uh, anything. So, what do you want to you want to have a, a Tata Nano? You want to have a, 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 a Rolls Royce? A Rolls Royce and a, anything in between. Hmm. You see, hmm. so uh, it's not like we want to sell a Rolls Royce every single time. Right. We do also a very simple studios. So that's also a misconception to think that we just do the top end. Yes, the top end is what is most visible, but uh, there is a lot of other projects that are much more simple projects, right. or home studios and stuff like that. And then we fit in a pro in a budget for sure. Um, so at the end, it's always the choice. There will be some uh, options, uh, and there is always a choice of uh, going for the top or the mid or the minimum uh, requirement. Obviously, there is a minimum requirement. Otherwise, we don't do it because uh, our reputation will be at stake. True, uh, true. So, what other projects did you have you all implemented for the music and recording community in India? Wow, that's you know over well, twenty years we have yeah. several hundreds of projects actually. Yeah, yeah but so. any names that you can think of? Well, the the the, the I would say what the, the the one that are more uh, um, visible project would be, so we started Rayman Studio. Yes. Then uh, we got a Mahati Studio that was in Chennai also, okay. from uh, Mani Sharma. Uh, then we got a, a bit smaller studio, but really cute and very well working, called uh, Clementine in Chennai also. Uh, so we got uh, after uh, different studios in, in Mumbai, in, uh, um, in, in, in different cities, in Bangalore and all that. Right. And, and uh, I would say, went up to uh, recently, I would say two, two projects that were uh, um, also quite satisfying. One is uh, Harris Jaraj Studio, Studio H in, in, in Chennai, which really uh, um, is a big space. Uh, it's about the best studio you can ever dream. I'm not saying in terms of design, that's to everybody to, to judge, but in terms of, uh, um, uh, I would say, um, space and investment and, 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 and capacity. Okay. Uh, it's really uh, impressive. Um, so we got an award uh, for that like two years ago. And this year we got an, an award for um, Jay Hengia Studio called uh, Island City in, in, in Mumbai. Yes. So that's, we finished uh, building it like a few week, month ago, actually not, not, not that long. So it's still in process. There's, uh, some fine tuning is still to be done in small, small parts, but in, in, for most of it, it's really, everybody's happy about it. Yes, that's true. And we've supplied some equipment to them. So. Okay, okay. So we, <laughs> this afternoon, one. I'm going to, to receive the, the award with uh, JJ so, uh, at yeah, uh, yeah. Palma. Yeah. Congratulations to that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, any, 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 yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, these are all reputed studios yeah. and I'm sure you would be open to doing Bedroom based studios. Yeah, we, 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 we are doing for, we are doing one in Bangalore for a, a passionate musician passionate. It's it's not bigger than this room, uh, and uh, we aim at really uh, good result within a reasonable budget. Yes. And uh, he's happy about that. But what counts for us is really the passion, because if it's, we do uh, um, something, it's a bit our baby, and then we want the baby to be properly taken care of. After that means people use it properly. They they respect the the, the investment and the care. And it's not just to, to do some cosmetics, it's really to do some efficient uh, treatment, efficient uh, uh, design that at the end leads to, to quality, right. spot quality. Right. So when you begin your work on design, after everything you know is agreed upon, do you need the list of equipment that the studio is putting first or is it No, okay? the, 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 our scope is not really, uh, we are not entering that zone of the equipment, though there will be a concern in terms of uh, uh, purely ergonomics. 
mm. how we, uh, I mean, what kind of mixing board do we have, control surface, uh, because it will have an impact into acoustics. Or, yes. uh, uh, same for the equipment rack, where they are they located, uh, under the desk, behind, uh, is the producer desk or not. So there is different uh, options. So we want to know the, the general uh, layout about this equipment, but the detail of the equipment doesn't matter to us. We are not into okay. that. There are plenty of good companies. Uh, that can uh, make a nice package like Studipolio yes. and uh, that can uh, basically give a, a, a solution for a studio to be coherent, to be uh, practical within a budget and uh, that's not our scope. Right. Our scope doesn't it uh, help if you know whether it's a 10-inch subwoofer or a 15-inch subwoofer that yeah. they're planning to put in uh, that? This is what I'm, I'm going to say. So yeah. we're not into uh, uh, this kind of equipment but we are 100% into Acoustics and electroacoustics. I know, but what I'm saying because is this is together. So the, the 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 loudspeaker system will be our scope. No, it will affect your design. It yes. will affect your. Suppose the person says, "I want to mount the speakers into the wall." Yeah. I don't want to keep them on stands. Yes. Shouldn't this information be shared with you before mm. you start? No, no. Not only it's shared with us, but it is our decision. Oh, okay. It's not the, the client's decision. Oh, he cannot say that I want it this way. No, he might say, "I want to have a main monitoring." Uh, yeah. uh, or a near field monitoring or both, uh, and then we that we will be listening. But the way it's being done, this is our scope. Okay. And even the even the choice of loudspeakers, there will be a, a several options uh, given that work with the size of the room, with the type of music, with the uh, expected SPL, with the distortion level, with whatever. Uh, we but this is our scope. It's part of our services to give the proper solution that includes uh, uh, acoustics and electroacoustics. But we, we usually we stay there, uh, and then when this is the shell and the, the, the loudspeaker system, the monitoring system is uh, frozen and decided, uh, the rest uh, will be helping to for the implementation. But uh, it would be the scope of somebody else who is going to supply and, and, uh, and integrate. Right, right. Uh, in Bombay, I have seen a lot of situations where. A designer comes into the studio, gives his design, and sets up a third-party carpenter team that works on that. Yeah. In a couple of months, if not a year, that carpenter team says that we are also acousticians. Yes. <laughs> because they've done one studio, so they think they can do any studio. Yes. And they won't take the help of a designer or an acoustician and then start doing it because they think they know everything. Yes. Do you face such situations? Well, it must be happening, but uh, um, Aditya is really uh, in total honesty. Yes, you can copy small some designs, some ideas. If you if, even if you don't understand, it, there's always a possibility. But you will never reach any uh, real quality level, and that's going to be known very quickly. You know that it's yeah, it's okay, but it's not uh, as good as. And uh, because every case is so so different, even if it seems to be about the same. Uh, the about is is a big big question mark, right. and uh, and that's where we enter because we don't design by copying anything. It, we start every time from scratch, and uh, based on scientific studies, we extract the information that is there to build and to uh, to have an environment that's suitable for a specific case and purpose. And a, a, a copy will will never ever work. We don't have any template of anything. Right. So we don't copy ourselves. So if carpenters are copying uh, us, uh, well, they, they, I don't think they understand the, the whole process. And that's maybe the education that you do with your videos uh, uh, to 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 give the message that please, uh, it's not a matter of even uh, because uh, we have enough work. We don't beg for work, so it's not having more project. But it, it gives uh, just a bad name to the to the, the, the music industry and the, and the, the, because the quality level does suffer from there. Yes, uh, so true. so. So don and also the, then the, who takes the responsibility of the result? The carpenter? Yeah. Uh, it's not going to be possible now. Yeah. Okay. Very true. Very true. So uh, Didier, when you say that a room sounds good, mm -hmm. how does one typically judge a room? So the first we have to distinguish between, uh, I mean, in the music industry, two type of room. One is the recording space. One is the control room, which is yes. actually totally different. Uh, uh, approaches and, and uh, the tools to, to, to use. Uh, so it, it's again, you know, context dependent. What kind of production are, are we doing? 
uh, and uh, what are the expectations of the, the owner, the sound engineers, uh, at all levels in terms of format? Is it a surround? Is it a stereo? Is it a main field? Just a near field is enough? Uh, is it uh, what kind of SPL? Is, yeah, some they, they ask for tremendous amount of level. Some they say, no, I will never go further than whatever. And we actually, we together, before even designing, we test, we just play some music and we ask, uh, please play the music what, as loud as you would do and we make a measurement to, to assess and do, so we don't have to overkill into the monitoring systems. And on the opposite, sometimes we discover that we need actually a 10 extra dB a headroom. So it's a, it's a, a really um, communication uh, that is there before we start designing. Uh, and then we know when we have that, we have then uh, the parameters to create uh, a exactly specific, specifically tailored environment for the for the purpose. And then uh, after that, I would not be able to give you um, uh, general tips because it's, it kind of quite vary actually. Okay. Uh, for recording space, it's, it's very variable because from super dry, because you want to have a, a no uh, acoustical imprint into the recording for typically for uh, fully work or, or some dubbing and stuff like that to uh, super live because you, you, you want to have um, an environment that is uh, different from the bedroom recordings and that will be bringing a, a plus to the, the recording. Like for, for the Island City, uh, the big main room for recording is, is pretty live. Right. Not too live because there is a, after it's unmanageable, but live enough uh, early, early reflections that are coming to give a, a, um, a, an interesting, that's the term interesting is, uh, is much more complex than just uh, few parameters, it's, it's, a, it's a combination of parameters to bring a, a, a proper um, a thickness, proper uh, um, color to, the, to the, the sound, enhancing it. I mean, you understand if you play uh, typically a violin uh, outdoors, open air, uh, the sound is pretty poor. So the, the, the violin is the instrument that goes with a specific uh, acoustical environment, otherwise it doesn't sound like a violin. Yes. So, but it's the same for all instruments at different level, different, sca different scales. Okay. So, uh, so this extra information that is required to the fullness of the instrument would be provided by us in a, in a proper proportion, but according to the, the, the taste and the requirements of the client. I think it's a very detailed work that you get into. It's not just yeah. some putting up panels and just no. getting away with it. No, we, with the, the, and also we use simulation tools to, to be sure about what we're doing. So, so that's the... The, the key and it avoids mistakes and, and uh, touching up uh, later on too much. Right. Uh, there's always a kind of final tuning in some cases, but uh, let's say 90, 95% is usually covered uh, right. from the study itself. Right. Uh, nice. So control room is different. Just that I was talking about the recording space. Control room is much more a standard approach. There is a worldwide, worldwide uh, um, consensus on what is um, I don't use really good and bad uh, uh, terms. What is, uh, I would say, appropriate monitoring uh, according to the, the type of monitoring and the type of uh, music, uh, and what is not. Okay. And uh, so according to that, we have uh, we work on parameters like what are the first reflections in the listening area. Do we use a reflection-free zone uh, situation? Uh, how we use it? How far? The, uh, so we enter into psychoacoustics, the has effect, the stuff that are a bit more uh, scientific uh, to get a picture coming from the loudspeakers that is as transparent as possible because that's the transparency that matters. I gave yesterday a lecture in, at Palm about the studio calibration. It's just to get uh, the transparency at the maximum you can get. Uh, that means you have a tool that's been hopefully properly designed but needs still to have some tuning to get uh, the final transparency so that you can work forgetting about the speakers, forgetting about the studio, accessing the sound directly. And when you touch an equalizer at any frequency, at uh, one kilohertz is easy to hear, but at what, what is it, an equalization at uh, 25 hertz, then do you hear it uh, or not? So that depends on the transparency and, and, the, and the acoustical uh, response of the room. Right. And uh, that is uh, another science, which is very different from the recording space. So, uh, what has been so far your most difficult project that you executed or <laughs> that you found a lot of challenges in and then you were very happy that it got yeah, nicely done? All of them. 
you know, uh, they, are, they have always some challenges. Okay. It's rare that you, you find a project where, wow, wow. so easy, not, not a problem, okay. it's always a challenge. Uh, the, the, I would say there are two types of challenges. One type is the, about the, uh, typically what you find in Mombe, which is the, the low ceiling uh, situation, uh, because um, to do any proper isolation, any proper treatment, that is a broadband that is not just only for the mid and high frequencies, uh, requires space. Yes. And if you start with a, a seven, four, seven, seven, eight feet uh, <laughs> um, ceiling, you're, you're in a really trouble. Though we, we, we can manage that, it becomes a bit costly because okay. we need to use the specific techniques that are really a, a bit complicated. It's possible, okay. but uh, not, uh, not so easy. Uh, otherwise, the, the other type of challenge we, we face, some, I mean, for example, we can uh, we can uh, refer to Studio H from Harris Jarrah, just the sheer size of the, the project and the many rooms, uh, and we don't want to have any crosstalk between the room and the leakage. Uh, that's really number one uh, because there are different projects happening at the same time. So, um, so the proper uh, I would say layout of the, the, the space and the proper um, isolation techniques. Uh, they, and also with the fact that Harris likes to listen very loud, um, that's his style. right <laughs> his style. <laughs> so the whole thing is really about, uh, um, uh, yeah, that's becoming a challenge. Uh, but it's not impossible if we have the uh, proper size, proper space. We started the building from scratch, so there was no problem about that. And uh, the proper budget, obviously. Yeah. yeah. So uh, thank you for sharing so much with us in this part. And Didi, in the next part, we'll just try and cover home studio tips that you can share sure. for do's and don'ts with our viewers. My pleasure. Thanks so much. Okay. Thank you, Aditya.